Hello and welcome from my end. Um, I'm not a developer. Um, I've worked with developers and I lead the Mahara project. Um, that's an open source e-portfolio system. And um, so at Catalyst, we are the maintainers and that means that I look after the entire community worldwide um, together with our development team and everybody else involved. And since I'm not a developer working at a software development company, I kind of feel like it is important to say that at a development company, they are not just developers. And since we are also looking into outreach and kind of wanting to get talent attracted to the IT industry, but not everybody might be a developer, I thought this is kind of a nice reminder um, for people to kind of see who's actually standing behind software. I did label it open software, uh, open source software, but actually it can also be any other software that we are using. Um, at ITX over the last couple of days, um, we've heard a lot of presentations around innovation and transformation, making things better, making things work better for the user, um, whoever that is. And um, kind of nobody really touched on, well, who is actually in there? Sometimes there was a UX designer, maybe a BA, but it was kind of just that nebulous thing. The software looks better, works better. We as a team decided on that. And um, oftentimes I still think when we think of software, we kind of have the stereotype there. It's the developer, the person sitting there with the headphones, in a dark room, sitting in front of a terminal, maybe these days in some cases the GUI, and kind of hacking away and working on the code. But I'd actually really like to burst that bubble um, because it is not just the developer. Oftentimes before the developer actually got this, the task to develop something, there were a whole bunch of other people involved. So I'd like to take you on a journey and uh, kind of explain that on the project um, that I'm involved in primarily because that's where my experience is, namely Mahara. Um, you can also see from my um, laptop cover, I'm really standing behind my software and or the software that I work on because I really like it. And um, what we see in our community is that we are actually not so a big developer community. We are a big community of people using the software. And we really need to start with the people using the <coughs> software because that's the people that we are creating software for. So it's, we are not creating the software for the developer or for it to be there and be yet another product that people can use. But we have real life people in mind when we create the software and we engage with them. In our case, it's the students and it's the teachers, for example, instructors at university, teachers at schools, assessors, any number of different people, and they all have very different needs and requirements that they want to have fulfilled by the software. And we as development company or development community in the open source world kind of need to look into those and need to make sure that we need those requirements in order to stay relevant. So who else do we have? Well, we also have, of course, our ninjas. Those are more active contributors that tell us stuff. Because oftentimes students and teachers, they are not really our immediate people that we are connected to every single day because they might be in a very remote area. But we do still want to talk to them, need to talk with them. And some of them are more active, um, reporting bugs, requesting features, wanting to improve things in the way that they are using the software to make it suit more. And that's where our BA and UX people come in, namely they then translate those requirements. And we have a whole bunch of other people then there as well, um, namely the backend developers, um, also frontend developers. There is the tester involved as well. We can't have a software development project without somebody actually testing what has been developed in order to make sure before we ship it out to, to one of our um, clients or the community in general, that it's actually working in order to get fewer complaints. We also have code review, which is a very crucial aspect in our development work, again, to minimize bugs, to make the experience a good one, and to make sure that we are also staying secure, that coding guidelines are followed, that other people can continue the work that we are starting as a community. And we do need designers. I mean, all the software that you've seen these days, and especially also at the conference, looked really pretty. It was a very nice UX, was shiny. 
And that's why we need the designers, um, because developers don't necessarily have that feel or that's not their focus. Um, when you work in a database, you can't at the same time think, how can you make the database calls pretty? That's why you've got the specialists who look into that, who have that expertise. We also have our translators. Very crucial, I find, and very important um, in our open source community for people to use the software around the world is it needs to be translated because then people feel more comfortable using the software that is being um, that they are sitting in front of when they can actually understand what's on the screen rather than being put into the default of English. I mean, very crucial in Germany, for example. Sure, lots of people say, oh, Germans know English. We, we can understand it. Yes, but that doesn't mean that every German person is comfortable using English all the time. Look at the French. They translate everything into French. And we have a very vibrant French community. We have a very vibrant German community. And that is also partially due to our fantastic translators who make it happen. Also in Japanese, we have one Japanese translator who does most of the work there. And as soon as we put something out, <coughs> few hours later, it is already translated because he wants to bring it closer to the community in his country. We also have documentation writers. They are necessary and documentation means both within the software as well as also user manual, for example, or um, some people also create uh, video clips, small instruction manuals. So it doesn't mean the 600 page thing that you have that everybody needs to create that. That can also be point in time tips and tricks that are being shared within the community. And we have help desk support people within the community. And under help desk support, I'm not just looking at the people that work at Catalyst or other partners or that are actively contributing to the software, but those people that are at, at the institutions who work with the product, who work or who work with any software. We have so many people who are just doing good jobs, explaining things and developing also workflows um, for students, for teachers to make sure that it's that they have an easy entry also into the software for certain things that we cannot provide. And we have our security guards. They are important to help us to make sure that there are no security holes. And because we are transparent and our uh, source code is open, um, everybody can look at it and therefore those things can't be hidden. And therefore we need to be there and we are open about security things bring out releases in order to show our community also that they are secure and they know why they are secure. Not to forget people on the back end again, namely our sysadmins. We don't need them. Somebody needs to run the servers. Somebody needs to untangle all those things, make sure that DevOps commands are run or that um, everything just works. Because we are on the application level and then the community on top, the users, we don't really want to care too much about that. It just needs to run. And that's what these people are doing. And also within other open source communities, they are making things so that we don't have to worry about them. We also have event organizers like Carl to come together to share and participate as um, Dave said earlier. It is very important to bring everybody together to make sure that we feel as a community and also advance and be that on the wider open source world, be that for a very specific software or for an area within society. Also not just talking about technology, but talking about wider implication, culture, politics, and the like, education, because it's not just about the technology. Um, it is so much about who stands behind it and who works with it and for whom it is. And we also have those people that promote it um, and who shout out about it, who talk about it in order to make it more widely known to others around the world. Because, and of course, we also have some automated processes in there. So they are, not the, they are the only aspect of the software development that we do, or the development of a product that is not a human. And they are necessary to take off some of those mundane things that we know we can automate so that we can always focus on what is important and to make sure that we have the time to talk to people who use the software, to look into how can we innovate, 
Because if we always have to look into the very mundane and trivial things, then there's not time to actually look at the bigger picture. But we need to look at that bigger picture. Because it is always that it's all of us together who create the software. It is not one single person. It's not two people. It's not a small team. There are lots and lots of people involved that sometimes don't even think that they are part of the community. If we are just looking at the user, because oftentimes kind of they are feeling outside of it, unless they are actively um, kind of looking into improving the software themselves. But they are really as equally a part as anybody else. So now how, what can we actually do in order to make it more visible to everybody who's involved in an open source community that they are actually part of it and therefore participate and share their experiences on any of these levels, be that non-technical or technical? Well, one way of doing that is to recognize all contributions and not just the technical ones. Some ideas here are mentioning people in the release notes or even in the code itself. I'll show a brief example in a little while. Um, another possibility is sending personal emails and giving them shout outs in the wider community. And something if you're all in one place, have some cake too. Celebrate the successes. And there are many, many more to come. I'm going to show you a couple of examples um, that might inspire your, might make you think. Um, the first one is that all contributors project that I mentioned. Um, I've recently found that on GitHub. And that is a way where uh, oh, the, there's a specification of how you can put that into an open source project or an, any project so that also people who are not already in the Git log or anyway as Git authors um, can be recognized. And because we are living in the modern age, you can now also have the profile icons and have more information about them, kind of the areas to which they contribute. That is one way of doing that. There are a couple of other similar projects that kind of put it into the header of a website of who's contributed and things like that. This is a very visible one um, that is possible then in a Git repository when it's locked at on GitHub, for example. One thing that we uh, do in the Mahada community is that for every release, every half year, I look into our Git history, um, who's contributed to the release. And of course, there I see everybody who has a commit in the code. Um, I also look at our sponsors, people who funded development work. I look at the uh, translators who contributed. And I also look at those people who don't appear elsewhere, like testers, BA, UX, and sometimes also design. And unless they're in Wellington, they always get a thank you card. And for every release, we create a different thank you card so that it's not just reusing of the same thing. And in that email, uh, initially I only sent an email and kind of thought, well, it looks a bit boring, so we've got a designer. So she makes us thank you cards every half year for it so that we can personalize those. And also sometimes people print it out, hang it on the door, have something that their um, contribution is valued. Because oftentimes we don't have, in, have a lot of money to pay people and kind of do things and they are not employed in contrast to a lot of other big corporations who just employ people and then have the credits running and the help and about file. So that's just one way of thanking people in in a nice and also very easy way, which I think every project can do, um, even when there are little resources only available. Um, and just say, thank you. In our office, we kind of have the cake, but um, last year we did something different because a colleague of mine came up with the idea of, well, he's, he's a Lego enthusiast. And so he created a Lego piece and uh, had the name on it. And so I thought, well, that's actually a neat idea for all the Catalyst contributors in this case to create personalized mini Lego figures. Again, we had Yvonne, our designer, create all the artwork around it. So that was not shipped off somewhere over to Europe and kind of done. But that was a labor of love and also many hours on the weekend. Because for some reason, you could not get white bodies without any printing on it. So the, the bodies that we could get actually had prison stripes on them. 
So you kind of had to take your metal polish and take them off. So those, I think it was about around 32 figures, took about eight hours on the weekend, um, just polishing things off the, the um, bodies and then hand putting on the stickers. And the stickers were actually pretty easy. Once they were printed, we just printed them on an A4 sheet of paper. So again, no huge cost for that. And the biggest expense there was kind of our designer who had to come up with all of that and create it. Um, but then just single-handedly cutting out seven or eight stickers for each Lego figure. So you can imagine that was a bit of work, but it was fun. And I enjoyed doing that because that was also part of the things to give to the entire team. And again, it was not just the developers who got something. And that takes me to my question, what do you do? in your communities to recognize contributions. <coughs> what have you heard? What do you think works well? What might not work so well? Um, so that we can also learn from what you've been doing since we are sharing things. Thank you. <laughs>